ready to cut some rafters and frame this roof. And we were... 10 inches. Ten and one. One was ten and two. One was ten. So. King of Wishful. Question: Do I want to keep any of this for scab and tails? How much is it? Well. Oh yeah, the kind of. Do, do a tail. Oh, you know what? I Can we get that? No, we can't, because now we got to go off of the foam. That's not a bad idea to have this. I think, I think that's easier. So the 24 foot rafters did not give us quite enough tail because we have to go an inch and a half past the plates because of the foam sheathing that we're using and we have 16 inch overhangs. Okay, young guys. Don't let the scrap hit the ground. That'll save you time bending over. Think about it, if you have to do this a billion times, you just saved yourself a billion times bending over. So the back is 14 and the front is five. 19? 19. I think it was 20 for some reason. There was one extra. Okay, you wanna do 20? Yeah, let's do 20. So for the main roof, we had quite a few different sections. We had sections that landed on plates. So that's the ones we're cutting here. Then we had sections that hangered into a, that five and a half by 15 garage glue lamp. And then we had a section that landed into hangers on an inch and three quarter by whatever it was, 14. So that's why we did these in stages. And we went ahead and set up three pairs of our jackass sawhorses so that we could roll out, I don't know how many it was, maybe 10 at a time, cut them, stack them, kind of clean up as we go. And just stay as organized as possible. This was 32, 24 foot, two by 12, Kiln dried Doug Fur. Crown everything toward the garage? Yeah. I like to alternate crowns, and that way it averages out the problem. Now, I hate to speak over this riveting audio, but because we were blasting a 90s classics playlist, Spice Girls just came on, and I don't wanna get flagged for copyright issues. Now, to minimize packing two by 12, 24 foot Doug fur, we just keep that unit. I ask for them double stickered and separate so we can snag them with the forklift. We raise them about the height of the sawhorses. We're already gonna rotate them and flop them. We want all the crowns toward the garage, and we're gonna call out anything that's really ugly. We're gonna set those aside, use them for something else. I always order a few more than I need for exactly that reason. Now it's just time to get into a rhythm. If we do a good job on the coaling, by the way, then that roof is nice and flat. And when that low angle sun hits it, you're not gonna see anything ugly. That's the goal. Get with my friends. Now, since I have the bird's mouth on my side, I'm just gonna go ahead and flush up the end of the rafter, flush up the top of the rafter, and then go ahead and scribe. Sometimes the rafters, now we're really fortunate here in the Pacific Northwest. These two by 12s are all gonna be 11 and a quarter. Sometimes they're 11 and an eighth, sometimes they're 11 and three eighths. Not a big deal. Whereas sometimes material could be 11 or 11 and a half. As long as the tops are flat, the roof's gonna be nice and flat. We don't care about the underside, because all of that's going to be in the attic. So that's how you do it. Now, sometimes the opposite is the case, where you might have a big cathedral ceiling, in which case you would flush the bottoms so that the drywall looks flatter. And you might be able to hide some more at the top. So cull, cull your material, and then all of this is a lot easier. Gasp, can you believe I overcut? Yes, I always overcut my rafters just enough that the scrap comes out. I'm not gonna use a handsaw. That is a waste of time, in my opinion. As far as overcutting, 
Some of you might want to finish your rafters with a handsaw. Go for it. I am not one of those people because I've proved to myself that I don't need to. Take a rafter, maybe cut a three foot tail. Overcut it so the scrap falls out. Take that rafter, screw it to a wall so the tail's about a foot off the ground. Now go stand on the end, balance and bounce on it. You're not even gonna hear that tail crackle. It, it really is quite amazing and I do recommend doing that. I've done that and posted it on Instagram. You can go check it out if you'd like or just do it yourself. It is pretty eye-opening. So I think I looked it up. Uh, dry two by six is like two pounds per foot. Yeah. So that would mean this is about four pounds per foot. Yeah. So 96 pounds of board. Yeah. Round it up to 100 to sound cool. I remember packing some, we were cutting around the street and then had to pack them around the back in McCormick. Across from Gehrings, it was a house we had done like back in 2001. Yeah. I really thought I was gonna die. Cause then you had to lean them through the window and I, I was giving serious thought to, I don't think I can do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And here I am, Kyle, 20 years later. On the ground? Because these two are going to go away on the next batch. Sure. Sure. Here, let's do this. Just slide them out. And then we'll walk less far. Someday somebody's gonna turn around and make you cry. Gonna and me cry. Don't you know? Don't you know? Things will go your way. Oh yeah, baby. Don't you wonder if Hazzy even thinks about us anymore? Hazzy. Oh, Hazzy. Oh, he's happy. Okay. Timmy's got to go potty. Okay. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll turn off the camera. So I looked it up. We started using these Makita saws in April of 2017. Like we've tried cordless saws, but once we, in fact, so I got one for a review for the Journal of Light Construction. And within a day, I promptly ordered another one online. Since then, we've added a couple more. It's a little underpowered compared to some of the other saws, but it's just fine and it's a lot lighter. I just have nothing good, nothing but good to say about these Makita saws. Really all of the cordless. I reviewed them all for Journal of Light Construction, compared them, but I really like that Makita. So take that for what it's worth. I, I, can't, I can't believe that we're cutting two by 12 rafters with bird's mouth. We don't ever overheat the saws. Yeah, we'll swap batteries out, but like we're doing this all cordless now. I wish I wasn't getting this old. It's just, it's just getting easy. On to another batch, this one doesn't have tails. Like I mentioned, and I think you'll be able to see it a little bit later in the video. Since we had those glue lambs and other beams to carry the rafters, we end up just hangering those rafters. Uh, hanger, by the way, is a noun, not a verb. <laughs> we set the rafters into joist hangers. Let's put it that way. And so that's why you don't see a tail, but it'll be plumb cut, plumb cut, and then a C cut for the hanger. That pile of scrap that is growing at my feet 
Is that just wasted wood? No. Hang on for just a few minutes. We are able to use up almost all of that and I'll show you how and I'll try to explain why we do this. So you can see that basically when we're in cutting mode, let's just stay in cutting mode. It's just more efficient and, and when you get used to the particular task, you just get a little faster and a little smoother. So instead of cutting a set, going and stacking it to get it out of the way up on the roof, just get them all cut. And therein lies the beauty of knowing how to figure out your rafter lengths. So we'll, we'll get, come back to that in a future video. I'll try to find the right plan and, and then really detail that out. It's not difficult. Now, I will say this, we often cheat. We've already built our rake walls. So instead of doing the math again, we're actually gonna just measure the rake wall. And that's one way. Let's just say that you did make a slight mistake in your rake wall. You can fix it easily by just changing the rafter length somewhat. So don't tell anybody, but we don't do everything perfectly. Notice too that Kyle and I work kind of opposites and that way we're not moving the same board that the other guy's cutting. It's just a safety thing, right? You don't want to yank on the board while he's in the middle of a cut. One thing to notice, right where I was just cleaning up scrap, we have a pile of blocks that are cut 22 and 7 16 So as we're cutting rafters, knowing that we have extra length, we cut those 22 and 7 16 Those are mostly going to become our bird blocks, but in some cases we're gonna rip them in half with a bevel and they're gonna become our blocking at the top of the rafter at the ridge. That's gonna be our boundary nailing for our roof sheathing. And it also acts like a little bit of a pressure block. So anyway, that, we'll come back to that. You'll see how that all works. But essentially, we're cutting our blocks at the same time that we're cutting our rafters. And again, it's just one of those things that helps you to save a step. Oh, you just measured the top plates? Yeah. Man, well, that was smart. Okay, I'm gonna warn oh, you, man. I'm trying to put some music underlying the next clip because I don't oh, want to get flagged for copyright, but at the same time, those okay, of you that yeah. know, you'll know. Shane, anyway, I, I hope you. that this works. Shane would just like listen to all of his music like at night. I still remember that music video. This isn't Phil Collins, is it? Yeah. It didn't sound like him at first. I know the song, but I'm just like, I didn't know Phil Collins sang this song. Is the way that I walk. So, are we getting enough out of the 16s? I don't know. I think we are. Yeah, 16. All right. Let's try this for the gram. First, first try. Nah. Yeah, let me get it. Oh yeah, dude, we have tons of tails. 139.2. Or tons of uh... I, lo I love tail. I would rather have six foot overhangs and skip the rain screen. Get it? Right. And ten, yeah, ten, in yeah, ten inches works. Ten and two, ten inches, whatever. Maybe leave the line. Don't tell me what to do. Like, if you tell me to wear a seatbelt, I won't, because I'm an American and I have rights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm an individual. And, you know, I got to this way of thinking by all those things people said. Yep. Okay, 16 and 12 off framing, because that's regular, minus inch and a half. 
Is that Kylie? I couldn't tell you. Oh, here's the top. Did you know that Kylie and Michael Hutchins were an item? Who's Michael Hutchins? The singer for NXS. NXS, yeah. Well, sorry. Here, why don't you make yourself useful? Why don't I do this? Why don't I? Oh. Do you want me to do, uh. Want me to cut those? Yeah. I mean, I could have cut them on my side. That would have been smart. Is that my marker? Mine. Uh oh. Can't find mine. It looks a lot like that one. No, I've had these in my bags for a long time. Okay. Very long time. How much? Okay, we already got blocks. We already got blocks, bruh. I don't know, 50%? How much do you think it would take for you to pay Nikki to go to a nightclub Like a legit nightclub, like in Seattle. Are there such things? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Name one. Pink. So it's not legitimate. No, oh, it's absolutely legitimate. Like it is a 100% nightclub. So they didn't actually let me in the door because I was wearing this like old navy jacket that kind of looked Windbreaker-ish. What? Um, so they had a dress code, like where it was like, oh, like and, McDonald's. And then it was like there was a line out the door. What actually is a nightclub? It's a bar and dancing. Well, every bar is a dance. No, but it's not where just like there's where you go to a bar and there's like a few tables. It's like a nightclub with the lights and the DJ and a huge dance floor and then the bar in the background. Like you'd see on Zoolander? Basically like, yeah, all the club, any, any club you've ever seen in like I don't think, an actual club. I don't think I could pay her to do that. Man, not even a billion dollars. Well, uh, everybody will do anything for a billion dollars. I'm just saying, what's your price, man? I don't think I'd have to pay Katie. <laughs> It's all the hip hop classes? Yeah. It's like art. It's art to get that entire cutoff in one piece. Now there's less cleanup to do. But again, we're not done. We're gonna use up that scrap. Okay, so we like to run our bird blocks vertically, not square to the tail. We use closed soffits, so it doesn't matter, but our engineer prefers, well, let's put it this way. We can avoid hardware if we put in vertical bird blocks. So we get the little cordless table saw out and we buzz them all through at the heel stand with the angle. Then we're gonna notch those for venting. What this does is it allows us to save an A35 or an RBC clip. Our engineer says, just make sure that block has got three toenails into the plate. Then we're gonna nail our roof sheathing into that block and that transfers the, the roof loads, uh, the, specifically the roof diaphragm load, down through the blocking into the shear walls all the way down to the foundation. I'm not surprised. It's a lot of ripping. 
Yeah. Oh, oh I you're okay with it. Yeah. Interesting. I was gonna try to get through that whole pile without. I was trying not to push it too hard. Yeah. It didn't sound like you were pushing it, but you know it's pretty thick material. This is the little, I believe it's an eight and a quarter inch cordless Milwaukee table saw. I've, since then I've put in a Diablo blade and it does rip a whole lot better. Uh, I should have done that to begin with, but it did okay. Just overheated the battery, right? I think that this thing works really well, even on a 22 and a half degree bevel, cause it's a 512. The writhing knife keeps it from binding and the little anti-kickback just does such a great job. And even the guard popped up like that does a good job. So yeah, guards can be a hassle, but I, I've just been like 99% really impressed with the guard. Uh, that 1% irritation is just the price of safety. So now we're cutting all these blocks in half so that out of each of those two by 12 by 22 and 7 16 I'm gonna get two blocks at the ridge. Okay, so keep track of that. And it's totally worth beveling. It's like, I don't know how many blocks, but it runs through pretty quickly. Now, here's the quickest way to cut notches. Our blocks are beveled, making it easy to set. You'll see that in a little bit. We have to nail our roof sheathing into these blocks, but we also still need to allow venting through the ridge vent. So I'm cutting a one and a half inch deep notch by six inches. So I go ahead and I center that on this first batch. Make one cut, cross cut on each side, and then I'm gonna go with the loose base plate, and I just plunge. And all I have to do is line up between the two depth marks. Nice and easy, see? Clean cut. This is the fastest way I've found to do it. We used to notch them and then beat out, and then you have blocks everywhere, it's just stupid. So we're using up all that scrap, cutting it down to 22 and 7 16 I make one scribe at the top, make sure they're nice and square. Again, this Makita saw is cut and square. You know what that means? It doesn't mean that Makita is the best. It means that we don't abuse our tools. So now what I'm gonna do is just cut my way through the stack. This is a little bit lighter than using a beam saw. I'll just cut, I'm basically cutting two boards at a time, not fully, but the cut on the underside, it just transfers all the way down. The other thing worth noting is that compared to a worm drive saw, these saws do not have as much torque. They also have an electron, electronic brake, electric brake, same thing, I don't know, who cares? They have a brake, so as soon as you let your finger off the trigger, the blade dies. It is gonna be very difficult to get this saw to kick back. Using it the way I'm using it, there's just not enough torque.
Um, well, you see, it's recording. Okay, I do, I do know because I can see the camera. Next time, tell me my hat's off center. It's always off center. Yeah, it's like like what? every every straw hat you wear, it ends up getting. Well, I think even baseball cap. I look in the mirror and I'm like, why am I crooked? Oh, maybe maybe you don't have the Denzel face you thought you did. No. Okay, so it's in my hand. This is how I always do it. Okay. Slightly crooked. Yeah. It must be that I kind of curve. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, you curved bullet. <laughs> oh, hey, Instagram. Uh, somebody forgot to subtract five and a half because of the beam. <clears throat> but if you're going to make mistakes, fix them quickly. It's the Martinez, what do we call uh, Stair gauges? It's the Martinez stair gauges. Rule number nine of Austin Framers is when you make a mistake, fix, fix it. it really fast. <laughs> Rule number 10 is don't make mistakes. <laughs> now that the rafters are cut correctly, we're gonna go ahead and stack the living room roof. Once that's all stacked and blocked, all that good stuff, we're gonna sheet it. And that way the overframe can land on top of it and we can get all the big rafters up. So again, because we have to have blocking at the ridge and then there at the beam, that's where we're gonna use up some of those beveled blocks with the notches and then some beveled blocks. Kinda act like pressure blocks. We'll add some hangers later, but that way we have full boundary nailing on all the roof sheathing. You might be thinking to yourself, why did we only stack the one side? Because it just doesn't matter, we had a nice straight ridge beam once that side was locked in. Also notice that the left-hand side, there's a two by four wall that the rafters are gonna land on. So if we make them perfect on the beam side, ridge beam to the beam that's carrying that roof, which I think was a five and a half by 15, that's all gonna be locked in. If these overhang a little bit, it really doesn't matter because it hides in the attic. with a handsaw. Oh no, that's very, that's quixotic. Well, is that a Britney Spears song? So the reason that we notched that rafter is because we have a six by six that's carrying a couple of ceiling joists sitting on top of the walls. So instead of trying to do any math, it's easier as you saw, just to scribe and fit. 
At this point, I can hand up to Kyle because these rafters are pretty short. So they're two by 12 for insulation, not for the span or for structural reasons. Uh, easily, we could have done two by eight for the span, but we need it for insulation. So Kyle's installing the blocks at the ridge as he goes. Now you can see the little vent notch. That's gonna allow airflow to come up and out. We ended up drilling some holes in the roof sheathing to allow the attic air to get up there. You're getting a taste of springtime in the Pacific Northwest. It's cloudy and drizzly, and then the sun comes out. And then it's cloudy and drizzly, and the sun comes out. So it makes it really hard if you're wearing rain gear. It ends up, you feel like a greenhouse. As Soon as the sun comes out, you strip it off. So honestly, you kind of just learn to just get wet and not worry about it. Now we can stack the big long rafters. And these bad boys are heavy, and as I get older, my elbows start to bother me. So I'm the guy at the ridge this time. Over the years, I've always kind of preferred to be the guy that lifted in the rafters and put the new guys at the ridge, taught them how to do that. One, because when I was younger, that was my job, and I just learned how to do it well, and I can control it. Um, young guys, they need just a little bit of experience, because otherwise they let pressure off the rafter when you go to nail. Anyway, it just allows me to kind of keep my eye on things too. But modesty hopefully will help me to stay framing for a few more years because I really enjoy framing, but I do not enjoy lifting big, heavy 24 foot 2 by 12 rafters. So I'm going to show at the end of this video how all of the uh, air notching goes. Some of you might be wondering, how come we're not putting our rafters on top of the ridge? And we certainly could, and there's nothing wrong with that. I guess my answer is, what's the advantage? In this case, we don't need to worry about insulation, but if you land the rafters on top of the ridge, you really should insulate those cavities. So we find that we just butt them. The engineer's okay with that. We um, spec these blocks at the top. He's okay with that. We got our venting. And then later, we're gonna add collar ties once it's all framed. Here are those collar ties. Just two by fours up under the ridge, five nails per side. There's a great fine home building article on collar ties versus rafter ties. Collar ties are in the upper third, and you can look it up in the code table in the International Residential Code. Basically what this does is as wind hits one side of the roof, it creates lift on the other side, which can open it like a clamshell. Now, that is impossible. So that's gonna be a two by four underneath the ridge that locks it all together. So, super, super strong. I guess I just don't see an advantage of lowering the ridge. But we've done it, and we'll do it if the plans call for it. Have you ever watched news radio? Uh, From the 90s with Dave Foley and no, never did. Phil Hartman was on it. No. Joe Rogan, young Joe Rogan. Oh, wow. It's actually really funny. I was kind of wondering where like Joe Rogan came from. Yeah, I found it on, um, it's like on Crackle or something. Yeah. Which means you have to watch it with commercials, which is right. pretty lame. Commercials? What is this, the 90s? Okay, we're gonna fight this one because obviously that is a gnarly looking rafter. Yeah. So I might have you cut this block because I think it's so cupped. Nice. Oh, Did you see that? Oh, brother. Hey, brother. That probably was like a quota. Yeah.
Please, sir, can I have a quarter? Would you rather be Australian or British? Um, I think Australian. But you have to live, okay, you have to live, you, you have to live where you're from. Yeah, Australian. Okay. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Do you know they have the most poisonous animals on the planet there? I doubt it. I mean, you could die if you were swimming in the ocean. What then? I think you'd have to remarry. Yeah, but she'd marry an Australian guy. That sounds like a win-win, really. I would be dead, and she'd have a sweet accent. Do you think she'd go taller or shorter? She'd probably want to try tall. It's very awkward to walk down the street holding hands. It's, unless the guy does yoga, it's really not all it's cracked up to be. Thinking that it's just like, oh my goodness. And now it's like I barely put fresh upward pressure on it. It really is true, yeah. Oh, don't look at that. Now it's time for the overframing. Becomes a little more clear how the roof fits together. So Two by 12 jacks over the top. Again, we just keep all the rafters the same length, even though we could, or uh, same species. Same species, it's all dug fur. What am I even saying? We're keeping them all the same dimension, two by 12. Now make sure that you have a sleeper that is big enough to support the heel of the rafter. The other side, we had it perfectly, not this side, so we had to add another two by four strip under the heel. Because you know, we're idiots. So Kyle's just eyeballing spacing with his tape measure. Uh, we don't trust his eyeball. <laughs> so obviously, remember earlier in, I think the last video, when we pulled layout across the back plates. Now you can see why we did that. That way two foot on center stays all the way through. When we sheet up and around these valleys, then we're gonna still split on rafters and nothing's gonna have to get pulled off layout. No, nothing needs to get added, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, there it is all framed up. They land into hangers at that five and a half by 15. Ceiling joists extend out to the front of the garage. There's the overframe. Hey, we got our sunny weather. We actually sheeted the whole roof in sunny weather. Uh, that'll be in the next video. Now you can see how it all fits together. We land the roof on top of the sheathing. There's the master bedroom hip tray ceiling, two by 12 sleeper, because it allows us to put more nails in and that's what our engineer likes. Can we be honest? That is a thing of beauty. There's just something about stick framing. Thank you all for watching very much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, oh, by the way, there's how the vent block detail works at the ridge. Nice straight line. I forget how long, is this 52 feet long in round numbers? I don't know. Thank you guys for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up. We'll see you in the next video. Or I guess you'll see us.